Great. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the third day of our week two conference. I'm Anna. I'm pretty sure everyone have seen my name on your emails. <laughs> so we are very happy to have two great talks today. Um, so the first one is um, the Sympathetic Q functions by Okada. So um, Professor Okada, so I'm going to um, let you have your talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction and also thanks for the organizers for giving me a chance to speak here. This is a wonderful conference. I will start. Okay, I will talk on some simplex diagonal analog of the Schroeder's Q functions. So this is my plan of this talk. First, I introduce our usual Schroeder Q functions and also present about review several properties of Schroeder's Q functions. And then I introduce a new uh, wide group invariant symmetric polynomial, which I call a symplectic Q function or symplectic P function. And I show you our Puffian formulas for them and also our tableau description or combinatorial description of them. And also finally, I will give her three positivity conjectures. Is this uh, talk is based on three papers. The first one is I introduced some uh, new general Puffian formulas and also use it to show uh, classical sure Q function identities. And the second one I introduced uh, some generalization, which I call, uh, which can be called as a nice variation of the Schur's P function. And the third one is the uh, most relevant paper in this talk, but it's still in preparation. Okay, I will start my talk. Yeah. Okay, here is uh, some uh, comparison between sure functions and sure Q functions. Sure functions and sure Q functions are uh, symmetric functions. And the sure functions are uh, parameterized by partitions. Partitions are the weekly increasing, a weekly decreasing sequence of so no negative integers. And on the other hand, the Schur's Q function are parameterized of strict partitions. A strict partition is a strictly decreasing sequence. The Schur function and the Schur's Q function have several uh, similar properties and also appear in the parallel situations. The Schur function uh, describes the irreducible characters of the linear representation of the symmetric group. And also, it gives you a reducible character of the representation of the GLN, the Lie algebra of the group, and also represent a Schubert class of the cohomology of Grassmannian varieties. And also give a solution of how function of the KP hierarchies. Also, a uh, Schur's Q function describes the irreducible character of the projective representation. The projective representation is a, a group homomorphism from the symmetric group to the a projective li general linear group. And also it is a reducible character of the least supergebra, clear least supergebra QN, and also represents a Schubert class in the Grassmannian varieties. And also our solution of the BKP hierarchies. And the main tool for a sure functions is a determinant, and also the main tool for analyzing sure secure functions, the Papians. And sure function, the sure Q function are both obtained from the whole of the functions. If the whole of the function is symmetric functions with one parameter t. If t equals zero, then you get a sure function. And if t equals minus one, you obtain a sure q function or sure p function. So this is a type A case. And the McDonald extend this definition of whole literal function to arbitrary root system. Then if t equals zero, then you get the irreducible character of the corresponding semi simple Lie algebra. And the main motivation is to study the t equal minus one specification of 
this whole residual function associated to the root system. Okay, we, let us recall uh, some properties of Schur's Q function, the Schuppi function. So first we define a whole retreat function in type A case. The whole retreat function is a symmetric polynomial in variables x1 up to xn with parameter t, which is defined in this formula. So if t equals zero, then you get xi to the lambda i plus and minus i plus one divided by this oh, x i minus x product of x i minus x j and symmetrize uh, of this rational function, then you get the shear function here. And if we, uh, you have a parameter t, then uh, this polynomial p x t is a uh, uh, symmetric polynomial with coefficient to the polynomial in t. So you can plug in t equal minus one, then you get the Schur's q function, Schur p function. The Schur q function is obtained by two to the L lambda. L lambda means the length of a partition lambda times the uh, t equal minus one specialization of the whole root function. Okay, this V lambda is some normalized constant. So P lambda X start at X to D lambda plus some lower terms. Okay, we'll recall some properties of Schur's Q functions. The Schur's Q function was originally introduced by Schur in his study of projective representation of symmetric groups in 1911. The Schur defined the, his function by three steps. First, he defines the Schur's Q function associated to the one row partition. If lambda has uh, length one, then he defines the function Q R. R is a uh, one row partition lambda R. Then he defines QR by using a generating function of this form. Then uh, he defines a, a length two case. If our lambda is RS is a strict partition, then QRS is defined in this form. So QR times QS plus some lower terms. Then finally, he defines a uh, Q function associated to a general partition lambda by using a Papillon with entries uh, given here. So corresponding uh, Q function with uh, associated with the partitions with lengths at most two. The Papillon is only defined for the even size skew symmetric matrices. So if uh, the length is even, then the, this function has size a lambda. If uh, length is odd, then we add one more row in the columns with this entries Q R zero. So lambda m lambda l lambda plus one is zero. So Q R zero is just the Q function corresponding to a one row Q function. Because this is our first definition of sure. And almost 80 years later, Nemo found a uh, formula which uh, resemble uh, by alternate formula for the sure function. The sure function is defined as a lessee of two van der Mond type determinant. In the Q function case, the Q function is, can be described as a lessee of two Papillons. So Nemo found such formulas. So 
this part end of this block matrices, there are this, this block has entries xj minus xi over xj plus xi, and this has uh, entries xi to the lambda j's, and this is Q-symmetric matrix, and this uh, zero block here. And the size R here is uh, the length of partition lambda or uh, length plus one, so that this Papian has size even. And this dx is the product of this uh, rational function xj minus xi over xj plus xi. And if n is even, then this part has Papian equal to this product. So if n is even, then q lambda is a ratio of two Papians, Papian of this block matrix and over this matrix appearing here. Okay, so this is a second definition of the sure Q function. And also, uh, Josephiak, Plagash, and Nemo found a uh, Papian formula for skew Q functions. Okay, so uh, the, uh, for a given partition lambda of length L and mu of length M, we consider this uh, symmetric polynomial in X, which is block for form, and this block has uh, same as the Schur's definitions. The entries are Q lambda I lambda J, and this block has entries Q of lambda i minus mu r plus one minus j. Yes, this is corresponding to one log partition. And this size r here is equal to the length of the mu or length of mu plus one, so that this uh, skew symmetric matrix has size even. So then this q function corresponding to lambda with, uh, with variables x and y is equal to the sum of this q, q function times in x and the ordinary q function corresponding to mu in the variable y's. Okay, so another third definition is a combinatorial definition of the sure q function by using a tableau, the strict partition lambda has length at most n, then the corresponding q function is a generating function of the prime distributed tableau, I do not define here. That is a, a sum of monomials associated to some tableau. Here is an uh, example of such tableau. The uh, CPT tableau is a filling of the CPT Yang diagram of this shape. Here is used the shape is 4, 3, 1, with entries coming from the 1 prime 1 and 2 prime and 2 and so on, and prime and n. And then the associated weight is x to the t is the product of the xk to the number of k prime or k in t. So in this example, x to the t is a, so 1 appears twice, so x1 to the square, and two appear twice and two prime appears here. So in total, x2 to the power three and x3 power two and x4 to the power one. And uh, we have several positivity results for the uh, Schur's p function, the Schur q function. The Schur p function is uh, just T equal minus one specialization of the whole little function. Then this Schur's P function uh, forms a basis of the uh, subling of the symmetric polynomial satisfying these conditions. Uh, if you substitute x1 is T and x2 equal minus T, then this resulting 
polynomials is independent of the T. So then you can consider the structure constant of this link with respect to this basis. So if you multiply two skew P, uh, sorry, shows P function and expand it in terms of skew P, uh, shows P function, then this structure constant F lambda mu nu is non-negative integers. And also uh, this coefficient can be computed by using a uh, sub-analog of the literary Richardson rule uh, due to Stanbridge and recently Cho gave uh, another way to computing this coefficient. Also, the sure p function is a symmetric polynomial, so you can uh, write this p function in terms of linear combination sure functions. And this coefficient g lambda mu is also no negative integers. Also, Stembridge gave a uh, combinatorial for computing this coefficient. Also, this positivity can be proved by using a uh, representation theory of Lee super algebras. So, this corresponding, this positivity of the uh, corresponding to the uh, coming from the tensor product, and the positivity of this g lambda mu coming from the uh, restriction from the queer super algebra to its even part. All right, now I define my new function. So the symplectic holotilde function is just a holotilde function associated with the loose stretch system of types Cn, which are defined in this form. So for lambda is a dominant integral weight, which is identified with a partition of length at most n. And the root system type Cn is given here. And x2 d lambda is x1 2 d lambda 1, x2 d lambda 2, and so on. And w is a wild group type Cn, which is uh, a small pick to the semi direct product, a symmetric group with the, uh, the product of n copy of the cyclic group of the, of the order two. And this normalized constant is a Poincaré polynomial as a stabilizer of lambda. In this case, this is just the product of this form. Then uh, this function is um, a wide group invariant poly Roland polynomial with coefficient polynomial in T. So you can plug in t equals zero and t equal minus one. So if t u to t equal zero, then you get a, a symplectic sure function, which is a reducible character of the symplectic Lie group or symplectic Lie algebra with highest weight lambda. So main actor of this talk is a symplectic P and a sure symplectic Q function, which is obtained by uh, substituting T equal minus one. The P lambda CX is a P lambda C or holotilde function at T equal minus one. And the Q lambda CX is just the uh, scalar multiples of a P function. So L is the length of the partition lambda, strict partition lambda. Professor Okada, yeah. um, there's a question in the chat. Okay. Um, Theodros Amdeberhan asks, what happens when t equals one in the symplectic sure function? Well, I don't try to compute explicitly. I don't know what's happening in the t equal one case. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you. So our result, can be summarized as follows. The symplectic Q function enjoy many properties similar to that of sure Q functions. First, we have a Nemo type formula that are less of two Papians and also sure type formulas. So 
which the Q lambda is expressed as a single papillon with entries are two uh, Q function at most two rows. And also we have uh, papillon formula for skew functions. And also we obtain a uh, proof of a tableau description, which was originally conjectured by King and Hamel. And also we have some positivity conjectures, including the structure constant. Okay, we state some Papian formulas for simplectic Q functions. The first one is the Nemo type formula, which is very similar to the original Schur's Q function. And symplectic Q function is expressed as a list of two Papians. So DC is uh, this product and which is equal to the Papian of this block here. So the AC of X is this matrix. So just replace the skew symmetric matrix appearing in the Nemo formula for these originally original shows Q function case. So original show function case, show Q function case is just xj minus xi over xj plus xi. Now we replace the each variable to is xj plus xj inverse. So the puffy of this uh, skew symmetric matrix is this product. And for the sure Q function case, the monomial appearing here, xi to the power of lambda j, but in this case, we replace here, this polynomial appearing here. So if dx is the two times xd to minus x to the minus d times x plus one, uh, x inverse over x minus x inverse here, or if d equals zero, it is one. So, and by using this pneumotype formula, we obtain a short type formula. Q lambda CX is a Papian of the uh, sink skew symmetric matrix with entries are Q lambda I lambda G. Once we get the Nemo formula, then this type Papian formula is an immediate corollary of this. Uh, Papian version of the Sylvester identity due to Knuth. Okay. So if X is a N plus M uh, by N plus N skew symmetric matrix, then uh, the you have a ratio of two Papians with uh, first N rows and then columns uh, plus, plus N plus I and N plus J lowest columns then this compound Papian is equal to the less of two Papians, Papian over X over Papian over X of this sub skew symmetric matrix. There's, there's yeah. a couple more questions. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Sami Asaf asks, is there an inner product for which the symplectic P and Q are dual bases? Mm, no, I don't know. Um, okay, and, and there's the other one which says, uh, uh, have you looked at specializations, uh, the principal specialization, x1 equals q, x2 equals q squared, and so on? Yes, but it has not a nice form. For the, uh, for the sure q function case, if or the principal specialization of the infinite variable case, it has a nice formula, but if you fix the number of variables n, then you do not have some nice formula. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so to use this short type formula uh, to compute the, uh, the simple Q function, you needed to compute the uh, simply a Q function associated to the partition of lengths one or two. The generating function of lengths one, uh, sure, simply a Q function is given in this product form. And also the length two case is given as a quadratic polynomial of lengths one, simply a Q function in this form.
Okay. So also you, we have some uh, Joseph Liak progression new type of skew function. This is quite similar to the original Schur's Q function case or Schur Q function case. This formula can be proved by using a Papian analog Ishikawa and Wakayama's minor summation formulas. So by using this uh, skew function, you can get a uh, proof of tableau description of a simple Q function. So, the King and Hamel introduced a symplectic primed safety tableau of shape lambda, which is a filling of the boxes of safety diagram with entries of this four n symbols. For each k, we have four symbols: k prime, k, and the k bar prime and the k bar, and satisfying these conditions. The first one is the semi-standard mass. The, each ent the entries in each row and each column are weakly increasing. Um, this happened for the prime entries and the unprimed entries. And each unprimed entry appears at most once in the every column. And also prime entry appears at most once in every row. And this has some symplectic condition. The at most one element from these four symbols appears on the main diagram. So this is an example here. So each row and each column is weakly increasing in this totally ordering. And the one one is a load, but two prime, here for example, two prime and two prime is not a load by this condition. And so one one in the same column is not a load by this kind of condition. And also, uh, if you put one bar here, then such tableau satisfies these three conditions, but does not satisfy this fourth condition. And also we define a monomial x to the power t, it's just by counting uh, the number of entries with x1 and xk and xk prime are uh, contribute as, uh, sorry, k and k prime contribute as xk, and the bars entries xk prime bar and the k bar contribute to xk inverse. So here's one, two ones, so x1 to the power t, uh, two second, and here's the two and the two bar two bar primes here, so x to the power minus one. And x3 appears here, so x3 to the power two and x4, and so on. And then the theorem is conjectured by King and Hamel tells us that the symplectic Q function is generating a function of symplectic prime safety tableau of shape lambda. So the proof is, uh, is based on the three steps. First one, the skew uh, induction of the variable n. And for the one variable case, it vanishes unless the lambda contains mu and the length difference of the length is at most one. And also in that case, this skew function is expressive determinant. So you can use the lattice pass method or this will be in a lemma to prove this. So, uh, and in the final five minutes, I will present your positivity conjectures. So the first one is concerning the structure constant. The symplectic P function also forms a basis of the subling of W invariant Lowland polynomials, satisfying these similar conditions. So Ft and minus T is independent of T. So you can multiply these two uh, simplex P function and expand it as a linear combination of the simplex P function. Then the conjecture is that these structure constants are non-negative integers. And up to now, I have only proof for the case of the length of new is equal to one. So just the purity type rule I obtained. In this case, we 
have uh, some expressed formula for this structure constant. So mu and lambda of the strict partition are all is positive integers and the structure constant is a purely coefficient is zero unless the length is equal to the lambda and mu are same or the lambda is mu plus one. And if this condition satisfies, then the purely coefficient is a sum of the power of twos. And if we have runs over all strict partitions, which interlacing mu and the nu's, uh, mu and lambdas, and this size condition satisfy. And this uh, A is just defined in this form. So this is the number of the connected component of the skew diagram. And also the second conjecture is the uh, following one. So this P lambda is a sh original Schur's P function. So the corresponding type A root system. If you plug in, this is two N variables. If you plug in the last N variables, X1 inverse to X N inverse, then you get our uh, uh, W wide group invariant symmetric poly uh, wide group one polynomial with a cancellation property. So you can expand it in terms of Q function, show the simple P function. Then the conjecture is that this uh, coefficient C lambda mu is also non-negative integer. So this conjecture is some kind of the P function analog of this uh, Schur function or classical groups character identity. The Schur function, this is character of GLN, a gl 2 n uh, corresponding to lambda, if you restrict uh, the corresponding representation to the symmetric symplectic groups, then you have this uh, character identity and this is a branching coefficient. So this a lambda mu is non negative. And the final conjecture is that this, uh, the expansion of the symplectic P function in terms of symplectic Schur function. The symplectic P function is a sim W group invariant, Y group invariant uh, on a polynomial, so you can express in this way. Then the conjecture is that this constant, the tilde lambda mu, is, uh, sorry, this is a typo, are no negative integers, this question is no negative integers. And this is a type C analog of this identity. So, so the uh, Schur's P function is expressed as a, a positive linear combination of the Schur functions. All right, I'll stop here. So thank you for attention. Thank you so much. So, is there any questions? Oh, right. Um, please feel free to put your virtual hand up or type your questions in the chat. I see there's a few. Uh, Zach, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, a few slides back, you introduced these a lambda mu coefficients for expanding a, uh, I guess, sure function with positive and or inverse variables, uh, yes. and then into these uh, symplectic shures. Um, yeah. And I guess I was just wondering, like, what sort of formula, like, is there a nice combinatorial description of a lambda mu? I'm, in part because I'm wondering if you have sort of a conjectural description of what the C lambda mu should be. No, I have no combinatorial. I'll do. Just uh, I conjecture based on some uh, uh, mm -hmm. computer experiments. Okay. And also there are some cases. Of... Yeah, and then um, reiterating Sammy's earlier question, so um, Right, like all of these conjectures for P's should imply the same conjectures for Q's because of the power of two. Yes. Um, but if there were some sort of dual relationship, I think that that would be a really, maybe a key tool to proving conjecture one, just because 
almost every proof I'm aware of for a little wood Richardson yes. rule for sure peas is basically a rule for skewing a sure Q. Yes, but oh, oh I do not have some uh, the cosy type formula for symplectic P functions, unfortunately. So I do not have uh, the inner product of duality. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Brandon, do you want to, Brandon Rhodes, do you want to go ahead and ask a question? Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, right, so uh, your conjecture three, where I guess you had a, a symplectic P function uh, hypothetically expanding positively in, into symplectic shures, do you yeah. think that will reflect something in representation theory, some kind of a super to standard restriction or branching property? I hope so, but I do not have any explicit candidate for their or at least a part of something. Ah, okay. Thanks. Uh, Theodros, uh, do you want to go ahead and ask a question? Yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, do you have a stability property for symplectic Q functions? Yes, I have one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, we have some uh, universal one in a sim uh, the symmetric function links, so, yeah. Okay, and the other question is, in one of your descriptions, you had considered uh, one, one bar, one bar uh, prime uh, with four different possibilities. Yes. If I look at it as four colors, have you looked at more colors? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never tried to, so in that direction. I, I see. Okay, thank you. Um, there's just one more question. Uh, Anna Schilling has a question. Anna, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, my question is similar to what Brendan Rhodes asked, but do you have like a crystal interpretation which might be able to prove conjecture three? I hope so, but uh, only I have one is some uh, say -er. King's tableau description, so it might be possible to translate it as some decomposition tableau or something like that. Okay, I have another question. Uh, yeah. if, uh, in conjecture two, uh, yes. you have tested uh, for uh, lengths of lambda less than or equal to two, right? Yes. Uh, perhaps have you looked at a staircase partition? Oh, uh, yes, but uh, well. Is that too much? It might be possible. I, I don't remember the computation bit. Uh, but, oh, uh, well. The lambda has length at the most n, but the number of variables are 2n. So that might be a problem, I don't know now, yeah. Thank you. Um, any further questions? Um, if, if not, it's back to Anna. Yeah, so thank you so much for Okada's talk. It's really wonderful. So let's either give like a Zoom reaction or just crap. Thank you so much for giving a talk during like midnight. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. much.